Alrighty, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Shifty's 49ers Talk. It's your boy Shifty coming at you with another one. Today, we're going to be talking about five players in the 2022 NFL Draft who I think would be a great fit for the 49ers. Before we get into that video, though, I just want to talk and say a huge thank you to all the recent subscribers. Had a bunch in the last couple of days, so really appreciate all the support there. Thank you to 49ers Ultimate Report for having me on again. And uh, yeah, with that being said, without further ado, let's get into the video. The first guy that I want to talk about is going to be Martin Emerson. He's the cornerback from Mississippi State. Now, Emerson is 6'2", 200, so he's got that ideal size for the traditional uh, zone, uh, cover three zone cornerback that you saw in Seattle a lot, like Richard Sherman and Brandon Browner and those guys back in the day with the Legion of Boom. Now, why does Emerson fit with our defense? Well, here's the thing. Number one, he's a great tackler, and that's very, very important in this defense. Now, we're not afraid to give up those two or three yard passes as long as we can make the tackle right then and there and don't give up the big play. So... The other things, too, that I really like about Emerson is that he's very, very physical in terms of his tackling ability. He's highly competitive. You can tell that after he makes a tackle, he kind of talks a little smack, but he's just like he's 110% in on every single play. Now, something that which I do like about him, but there could be drawbacks maybe early in his career, he does gamble quite a bit. Now, I do think I'd like to see a lot more production from our cornerbacks in terms of interceptions, but overall, you know, he might bite on a couple of plays, especially early on in his career, so I think he could be a guy who maybe sits for the first half of the year and then come in and then maybe similar to like an Ambry Thomas-esque type, uh, type season where he maybe comes in later in the year and has some big moments. One thing which I'm not crazy about, though, is the fact that he could have penalty issues. He's pretty handsy. You can tell his physicality comes across in his coverage, too. So that could be an issue. However, what I like to think on the positive note is the fact that, you know, we had a ton of interference, pass interference issues early in the year. We were able to coach the guys out of that. So maybe we could do the similar thing with uh, Emerson. Now, ultimately, I think Emerson is a guy that we may have to target at the end of the second round potentially third, but I think he's a great fit for this defense and we definitely need depth at cornerback. The second guy on this list is going to be a guy who is in one of my mock drafts and that is the center Alec Lindstrom from Boston College. He's 6'3", 298, so he could definitely use with maybe a little bit bulking up. But here's the thing which I really, really like about Lindstrom. So he's a three-year starter. So he's got a ton of experience starting at center. So it's nothing new to him. There's no position change. He's very, very used to it. Boston College run a relatively pro-style offense, which is very big for us. Um, he's an ideal fit for the zone blocking scheme. You know, he's got a good initial burst. His athleticism is going to be a huge, huge thing. So how he performs at the combine could mean that maybe Lindstrom goes from a fourth or fifth round pick up to a guy that we would have to absolutely take in the third round. Now, ultimately, he's a guy where I think he will need to um, get his strength down a little bit. He's going to have to like, bulk up. He's going to have to be ready for those NFL defensive tackles. So I think that in terms of a perfect fit, he fits our scheme really well in terms of knowing the blocking assignments and things like that. However, I think he's a guy who's a perfect candidate to sit behind Alex Mack for a year and then seamlessly or relatively seamlessly come in and become the starter and become a long-term starter for us at center. So the third guy on this list is going to be Sam Williams, the edge rusher from Ole Miss. Now, Sam Williams, he's 6'3", 268. What I love about Sam Williams is he actually reminds me significantly of D Ford coming off the edge. He is explosive off the line of scrimmage. I was watching some tape on uh, Malik Willis and uh, when Liberty played Ole Miss and the thing that kept jumping out on me was this edge rusher who just kept you know, bursting off the line of scrimmage and getting into the backfield. And that was Sam Williams. He's a perfect fit for what we do. Not only that, I mean, his skill set would have fit in really well with what we need right now. With D Ford, I mean, he's probably going to retire or essentially be done. So we need to replace that kind of speed off the edge. We have that somewhat in Ebu Cam, but here's the thing. I think Sam Williams would be a guy we can develop. He's still very young. You know, he's a ton of potential ahead of him. And I think being able to play with guys like Nick Bosa and Ebu Cam and Omenehu and all these guys, plus with the coaching from Kasurik, I think we could really, you know, unleash the full potential of a guy like Sam Williams, who could end up being a double-digit sack guy. I kind of compare him to maybe like a Harold Landry from a couple years ago. Now, 
One of the issues, though, which I see with him is he did have some off the field issues a couple of years ago. So whether that's all figured out or anything like that, that could be a major issue. Whether we, I mean, he has the talent to be like a second, third round pick, but maybe that drops him a little bit. Now, then at what point you have to think, would we take a chance on a guy who has off the field concerns? Or are we thinking that maybe those concerns are a thing of the past? Now, if I'm not mistaken, I read that the charges were dropped. So there's that. Um, the last thing, which I actually really like, so I want to end on a positive note here, which I really like is the fact that in terms of like his pass rush moves, from his uh, junior year to his senior year, really stepped up. You could kind of tell a little bit. I just watched a couple of games from his junior year where it was very just like try and get by in athleticism, whereas last season he definitely like set guys up, had a couple of counter moves. So not being able to show improvement is huge. And then long term being able to just unleash, maybe have a bunch more moves with the coaching of Kasurik, watching guys like Bosa in practice. I think this could be a really, really good pick in maybe the third round um, and is a perfect fit for what we do. The next guy on this list that I want to talk about is going to be wide receiver Christian Watson from North Dakota State. Here's a guy who's 6'5", 208, and straight away we got to mention, of course, he was former teammates with Trey Lance at North Dakota State. So immediately there's going to be chemistry, there's going to be um, familiarity for both of these guys, which could really help both of them out. Now, why is he a perfect fit for the 49ers? Well, that in itself is a big reason, but beyond that, there's a lot of other things too. So look at that size, 6'5", 208, and this guy can fly. He is a speedster. Those are a lot of the things that we're actually missing in our wide receiver core. Now, Jawan Jennings is a pretty big receiver, but this guy's a whole other level. So you think just like big, tall receiver who can maybe go down the field, he's gonna be a matchup nightmare for a lot of cornerbacks, especially cornerbacks who are under six foot tall. With his speed, he's played in a pro style offense at North Dakota State. Clearly we like the offense they run there because we drafted Trey Lance and traded up and gave up a whole bunch of picks for him. But uh, I think he would be a great fit here in San Francisco because he just fills so many needs for what we are lacking at the wide receiver position. And we have damn good receivers. I mean, Debo, all pro. Ayuk has easily pro bowl potential. So just with those last points in mind, the one drawback is because I think he's a guy we would have to take in the second round. He's just risen up draft boards. And I think after the combine, maybe even more so, but is that too much of a luxury pick right now? So, you know, we have like two, like I think very good receivers. Of course we have George Kittle. We don't pass the ball a ton, but maybe that changes with Trey Lance at the helm. So great player, great fit, but is the value there in terms of, is that what we need right now? So I think it really will determine on how we address free agency. And of course, we're going to have that first. So if we can fill a lot of our needs in free agency, then I would love to see Watson in a 49er uniform. And last, but certainly not least, of the best fits in the 2022 NFL Draft for the San Francisco 49ers is going to be safety, Verone McKinley the third. The third. Out of Oregon. And here's a guy who's 5'11", 193, probably available in that fourth round range. Why is he a perfect fit for the 49ers? Well, played a lot of zone concepts at Oregon. That's the defense that we run here in San Francisco, a lot of uh, cover three concepts. So I think in terms of being able to learn the defense, that wouldn't be a huge transition from college to the NFL for McKinley coming to the Niners. One of the things I like about him too, and probably my favorite aspect of the guy, is that he is a playmaker. He is excellent ball skills and something that that is really where we're lacking right now in San Francisco. When like, we look at our safeties, we look at Jimmy Ward and Jaquaski Tart. Um, both of those guys are in the right place at the right time most of the time, but uh, they don't really make the big play. Now, I know Jimmy Ward had a couple of picks against the Rams, but other than that, no interceptions. I don't think Tart had any interceptions last season. So that's something that we could really, really use, not only at the safety position, but on defense. You know, our defense played really, really well all year long or for most of the season. But we just never had those, we, not consistently enough anyways, had those big plays on defense where the interception where it's the back-breaking play. Um, and I think McKinley is someone who could really bring that to the team. Now, also what I really like about McKinley too is that he's a very good tackler, sound tackler. Now, if you think back to like the last season and even just the years before, 
a lot of times you'll see guys like Jimmy Ward, you'll see Jaquaski Tart make a big tackle where if they don't make that tackle, that could be a massive game for the opposing offense. So I feel good about McKinley and his tackling ability to be able to also make those big tackles. Now, with all these good things being said about him, he makes plays, he's a good tackler, blah, blah, blah. Why is he available in the fourth round? Well, the thing is, he does not have elite athleticism. So he is very average in terms of speed. He's definitely not going to be that single high safety that some teams still run. But a lot of teams, I think, when they look at the safety position, they want that elite athleticism. They also want someone who's maybe a bit more versatile. Now, I think McKinley is not really the guy who could maybe, he could play a little bit in the slot, but I think he needs to be at the safety, keep him there. So he doesn't have that same versatility as a Jimmy Ward, let's say. But overall, I think even though he lacks some athleticism compared to other guys, I think he makes up for it in instincts. I think he makes up for it in playmaking ability. And I think he makes up for it in tackling too. So to me in the fourth round, I think he would be great value. Ideally, in a perfect world, he could maybe sit behind Jimmy Ward, sit behind, I would like to bring back Jaquaski Tart on a cheap one-year deal. Maybe he, hits, he sits behind Tart for a number of games and then comes in and then we can see his playmaking ability. But... That's about going to wrap it up there, guys. I think um, this is my list of the five guys who I think are the best fits for the 49ers. I would love to hear your thoughts on my list. I'd love to hear some, you know, when you guys are doing, let's say, your draft research, who are some guys that you would like to, the 49ers to look at. And I'm really going to leave it there. I'm going to have some more videos coming out very soon, some more free agent stuff. If there's any crazy 49ers news, of course, I will cover that. But at the end of the day, guys, you know I'm going to say two things. I'm going to say the butt counts. I'm going to catch y'all on the flip side.